Hi, this is Jack Downs. I'm doing a little run through of Premiere um, and a little practice session. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've opened up the program. Your splash screen might be different than mine, but someplace in it you probably have a new project and open project buttons. We're going to go to new project. You always have a project. The only key things are that you give it a name that you remember or it makes sense to you. So I'm going to say You include the date. I think that can be helpful. Um, and otherwise, uh, you need to browse to make sure you know where it's going to go. Mine's going someplace that's going to be useful for me already. But make sure you know where it's going to go. So browse for that. Ignore all the rest of this stuff and say OK. Program is not the fastest thing in the world. It takes a little while to do stuff, so we are waiting. I'm going to pause for a moment. And finally, I came back. So. I don't know, but when you open it up the first time, you frequently have a learning workspace it may have defaulted to, which might show you different tutorials and so on. But I generally, I do like using those workspaces up here. Some people don't. They aren't required. You can do most everything in any workspace. But I generally think you should start in assembly. By the way, if any of the workspaces don't look the same to you, well, you might be using a different version, might be slightly different. Also, anytime you can go to the workspace and reset to save layout, which will bring things back again, especially if you start lose windows or things go a little out of control. So this got this big area here to import media. Yes, you can get it in like 12 different ways. I like just dragging and dropping it in. These are the files I'm using. If you're playing along with me and you're in a class, then you can get these on Moodle. And what do I got here? Eight files, a sound file, one, two images, three images actually, just JPEGs. I've got an old piece of video, which is a pretty low resolution. I got one, two, three good pieces of video. What can we do here in this assembly area? Well, one thing is we could do is we could double, we can we could hover over any of these things and, and look at the video a little bit by moving our cursor around. We can go change the view down here. Um, for instance, I could change to a, a list view. I could change back to the icon view. I could change the size of the icons if I wish. I can do that sort of stuff. I can make new things here. Uh, uh, I can delete things here. I can also double click on something. Let's double click on Super One. It brings it up in this source preview uh, panel. Let's call it a source preview panel. Why not? Um, where I can listen to it. Portation power, so I could go anywhere. And I, my cursor happened to be not at the beginning of it for some reason. I can bring my cursor around yeah, different places. In fact, I can also set in and out points. Let's do that for this point. You can use this window like the trimmer window kind of in some other programs like uh, Movie Studio. I can see I'm going to, there's this little gap at the beginning before he starts to turn and ask the question. I'm going to put my in point right there. Here's the in point. Mark in. And then at the very end, I'm going to put an out point just after he brings the mic back. I'm using, moving that scrubber around. I'm going to put the out point right there. Okay, now those in and out points have been established. Oh, I can move them around if I wished. But now they've been established, that means that whenever I used this clip, that I would only get the part in between the in and out. So, not necessary to do, just an idea that that's something you could do. Other things we'll see later is there's two buttons here, drag video only and drag audio only. We can drag onto the timeline with one of those. Okay, so we're going to drag something to the timeline, but right now our timeline says no sequence. In fact, let's do this by going to the editing workspace. Here's the editing workspace. You'll see we still have a source panel. We can still do that kind of stuff. Now our little files panel has gotten smaller down here. I want to make sure my icons are all the way small so I can see everything. I have to scroll to see everything. Um, and I, my timeline's got a little bigger. Honestly, it's still pretty darn small, which is one of the issues with the, so much going on on these screens. In any case, how do we get something on the timeline? Well, it says no sequence right now. It means we need to make a new sequence. In, in uh, Premiere, you always have a project, which is the overall just opening of the program, and then a sequence, which is essentially the, the movie, the video that you're making, the stuff on the timeline. You can have multiple sequences going at one time inside one project, if you wish. Um, so it's important that you start with the correct piece of video. It needs to be kind of the biggest, best shot on the best camera, highest frame rate kind of video. We, we, although you can make a sequence from scratch, 
if you know all the settings and everything, it's, it's not really worth the trouble. Um, instead, you use a piece of video to make the sequence, and it uses all those settings. So we wouldn't use a still image. We wouldn't use some old junky piece of video. We'd use a good piece of video, like any of the super, one, two, or three. And let's use super one. We can do it a couple ways. You do a right click and choose new, sequ new sequence from clip, or you can just drag and drop it onto the timeline. Um, so I've noticed sometimes the drag and drop is a little slow. Uh, I see they get a little hand and a plus mark. That's good. And you just have to drop it and have faith that it's going to land someplace properly. We now have a sequence started. And here it is. It looks the same almost as the video. It's got the same name. And that is a problem. I suggest we change it. I'm going to call it sequence one. I like using the word sequence there, so it reminds me it isn't just a video, it's a sequence. I don't try to like drag it on the on there again or something. Um, uh, it looks the same way, although the icons are a little bit different. Um, the, the little in things inside there, um, which have to do with other stuff, whether it's on the timeline and so on. So here it is. So how do we move around here and see things and zoom and stuff like that? First of all, our track header is pretty darn big um, for what we are the amount of space we have and the files panel probably probably don't need it that big so i'm going to move that down a little bit i'm going to move this over a little bit you have control over these things you don't have to take the, the, the timeline just the, the 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 workspace just the way it is move this up a little bit to bring those source the source panel and the this is the program um preview panel at this point, it looks the same because we use that same piece. But look, if I double click on a different piece over here into the source panel, we see that the program sequence panel is different. It has to do with this. And we could we could just run this. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Just like we could have over here for this one. Because everybody said so this is looking at something that's not on the timeline or outside of the timeline. This is looking at the timeline itself. Okay. Um, so we can use uh, plus and minus just like we do in other programs to zoom um, we can use a zooming toolbar too so i'm going to do um, uh, plus oops let me make sure my cursor is actually in the timeline here control plus it makes that zooms into the video and control minus brings it back down again um, just into the video though i'm afraid um, also, though, I could scroll, use the zooming scroll bar to zoom this way. Oh, by the way, I could have done, um, let's see, shift plus brings both things up and down, the shift minus, and control plus, just as that's right, just the one thing, um, and Alt plus is just the other, um, and there's more of the pluses and minuses that you could do. This, I'm just using the plus and the minus that are over the uh, near the backspace button. Let's see if I do all of them. Yeah, doesn't do anything. Okay, good. Um, however, you might find yourself using these more frequently. I zoom in time here, and I zoom in. Uh, in vertical size here. So I can bring this down, make the video bigger or smaller. Now these areas of video and audio, of course, right now I'm just defaulted to, the first thing goes to video one and audio one, but there are more tracks and we can add as many as we want. I see up here, there's other tracks here, video two and three are already named there and room for more. But look at these little scroll bars are separate, one for video and one for audio, which would be a little hard to get used to. You can also go in between them and change the, the spacing like that too. So uh, you can also use the letters uh, K, sorry, spacebar, spacebar to start, to K, to, K to kill, L to start, K to kill, excuse me, J to backwards, hit it again, you go faster, J, K, L, and spacebar work also. So that's moving around a little bit. Um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to tell you about moving things around? Oh, you should be saving this as you go with the control S regularly. Um, so I guess that's about it. Hold on just a minute. Okay, just to practice, let's zoom 
out again to make this more room on the timeline, I'm going to drag and drop in two and three on here, super two and three, which is where there's super two, drag and drop it in here. Um, for one or whatever reason, sometimes the video may flop in different places. I'm going to put them like consecutively there. And I'm going to put number three on here also like that. There it is. I can make them consecutive if I wish. I want to show you, uh, of course, you can delete any one by just selecting it. You can shorten anything by just grabbing the end of it and shortening it either end. You do have control Z's. Go back again. Unlike some other program, uh, video programs, if I try to overlap, push one clip right into another one, it doesn't overlap and create crossfades. It actually shortens the other clip. See what happens when I push in here? This clip has become shorter. This has become shorter now. Okay. Um, so I'm going to hit some control Z's on that. Also, let's say I want to delete this clip here. Um, if I just do a regular delete, it leaves a gap. Do control Z. But if I do a shift delete, I'm using the delete key actually. Oops, I got to select it first. Shift delete, it deletes it and things push together. This they have a number of tools that do some things like this. They're called ripple effects. And shift and delete is an example of one. Kind of keeps everything together. Like so you could delete one thing out and other stuff. Oh, you could have hundreds of things on the timeline. They would all slide down nicely, which is kind of a neat tool. Okay, let's go ahead and oh let's see other tools. We have other tools here we can use. For instance the razor blade I can make a slice and a slice inside something and then I could grab a piece of it so the selection tool and I could delete it or shift delete, select it again. I gotta click on it like that. Um, there's, I don't think you can use the pen tool very much here. Hand tool, I don't think so. Type tool, I don't think so really so much. Ripple edit, um, tracks like for, well, the slip tool and the ripple edit tool, maybe we'll get to those later if we have time. You, or you can learn about them. They're not that necessary, but they're interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and delete everything on from the timeline except for um, track one, which is still there, super one, which is still there. And this time, I want to drag on two normally and three with video only. Here we go. I'm going to drag two on and then three, but I want to drag three with only the video. How do I do that? Remember? If I double click on it and it appears in the source panel, there is a drag video only, and I could drag and drop the video only. So that's one way to get video only in some place. Another way is you can remove or silence audio that's there. See, we have audio right here. If I put my cursor right here, of course I can hear audio when I play. We have teleportation power, so I could go anywhere whenever I want. Okay. Do you notice that we're only getting audio mostly almost all just one so channel? See these, these levels over here? That's another problem, a different problem we may have to, we'll have to deal with later. More on that later. Okay, but we want to get rid of the audio from each of these. Well, there's a couple ways we can do it. So I could select the clip and do a right click and choose unlink, which now separates the video and the audio. And now I could delete either one or I'll move them separately if I want to for some reason. I'm just going to delete this one. So that's one way to get, another way to get rid of audio or video instead of just dragging them in that way. Um, over here, and by the way, did you notice that we only got the portion of the clip that was in between the in and out? No, you didn't notice. Well, believe me, or you can check it yourself. Um, okay, so now there's another way that we can we can do this. Actually, of course, there's probably 12 different ways we could do it. But let's look at this, the audio on this clip here. Um, and I have the regular selection tool, which is kind of important. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more in the zooming toolbar. Scroll over there. And I'm going to zoom in a little more over here, too, with my zooming toolbar. See the line between the two left and right channels? If I hover over it, my cursor changes. I will get a gain line. So now, see an auto save just happened there, which is a nice feature. I'm going to grab the gain line. I can yank it down. I can re reduce the, the volume, the amplitude or gain of this, of any audio uniformly across the entire thing like this. Um, and just by a little bit, which might be an important thing to do, or I can reduce it down to zero. So now the audio is still there, but I can't hear it. Ready? Nothing there. She's talking and nothing's coming out. So that's another way to, to do that. Um, so I'm going to, I want to, let's just shorten these guys up quite a bit to make some more space here. We have 
for whatever reason, and this will be apparent when you do your real video, you might have some little clips of something you're gonna show later. And, but you don't want, you wanna do something like have your intro. Sorry, with a little hiccup there. Had to uh, go to class. But here we go again. So all I've done is arrange these three clips, shorten them, and remove the sound from all of them, one way or another. Uh, various ways of doing that. Now I'm gonna put a title on at the beginning. Um, honestly, because we don't have sound underneath it, I could, I could stagger and make the title kind of consecutive. I would go, how do I go to titles? Mm, well, actually, till now I should have been in editing. I'm going to go to titles, which is graphics. And here I can click on browse. Oh, hold on just a moment. Sorry, as usual, uh, programmers is having trouble waking up. So I go to Browse. You may have access to Adobe Stock, um, but I think in my templates is probably everything you're going to need. Your choices may not be the same as mine here. If I scroll down, I could see I have a plain old title here. I'm going to grab that one. But there's lots of other ones. Some do fancy things. They'll show you their little movements sometimes if you hover over them. So I'm going to drag this one out and drop it on top of and put my cursor there also so I can see in there. I can see the title showing up there. There it is here. The reason it looks black here is it's actually just transparent. Okay, so what do I do? Well, if I want to edit it, I can just click in here into the text and I can type, you know, my movie. Let's use some exclamation marks. Why not? Um, maybe that's not enough text. I want to see something else. I can actually just use my text tool and drag a little box here and type some more. Type more. And I could open up that box more. I could center things. I think, man, no, that's that's the wrong font. I don't want it to be black. I want it to be light. And I want it to be that size. I want it to be smaller. And I want it to be centered. So on and so forth. You see, I've gone to this editing area as opposed to browse just automatically by clicking in. Or I can go back and forth between them. Um, but now I say, that's great, but you know what? I want it to be on a black background. Well, how do I do that? Well, the easiest way to do is to bring a black mat in between them here. So I grab my title and move it up to this layer. And in between here, I put a black mat in there. Um, some of you might find, if you browse, you might find a solid color here. I have one, a solid background. I could just drag that over here. But instead, uh, some of you, I, I guess in some installations, this isn't here. I don't know why. Of course, then you could turn it to black or whatever color you wanted to. But let's go ahead and make something new. There's a new item button way down here on the files panel, new item. Um, you can go file new um, here, color mat, either place you get to the same thing, color mat. It's gonna, these settings are probably fine. It should be picking up from our project, we hope, for our sequence. And I'm just going to say OK. And for color, I'm going to go pick uh, black, which is probably was going to be already. And I could check here to see whatever, whatever. RGB is that's supposed to be zero, actually. Be completely black. No, not. Oh, come on. Zero. RGB of zero is black. Say OK. And I'll name it black. Say OK. Come on, okay. And I made it down here. And I can just drag and drop it in here. It actually came in the same size. And now look at it, it's black underneath there now. I can make it any color I want. So you can make color by just making color matte. Um, and I could do more of these titles, but I think that's enough for now. Um, we'll leave it like that. And you, you don't have to have black. I mean, you could just do the transparent one too. And maybe you'd add more effects to the like outlining and color letters or something else. You can also move them around there. Ah, did I show you that? Let me yank that out here. Um, I could just grab the darn thing and my selection tool, not the type tool anymore, and I could move it too. Right, did I get it screwed up? Well, I could tell it to be horizontally centered and even vertically centered with these buttons here. I can do more aligning and stuff here too. They had lots of type on here. Good enough for now. Okay, now let's drag number one on again right there with its audio. 
and take a look at it. Um, something looks funny here. I only have audio mostly in one channel. In fact, if I play here, I'll put my cursor there, and I'm going to play, I'm going to watch these levels over here. Oh, I might as well go back to my editing area too, if I wish. Well, honestly, it doesn't think, it's, you could do anything in any workspace, so it doesn't really matter, I suppose. I'm watching the levels over here now, and I'm going to play. Look, at there's a little bit of, back, of noise here, but it's mostly all in just one channel. And that's bad. We want to have our sound in both channels. Um, I've seen a presentation destroyed by this problem because some, some presentation systems only send one channel, and you hope that it's the right channel. Um, this is probably because there's a problem with the mic. But actually, lots of mics do this, so it's not that unusual. So how are we going to get the sound in both channels? There's a few ways to do it. Here's a, here's a good way to do it. I'm going to do a right-click audio channels. And what I see here is media source. I see on my, le my left channel has a sound. The right one doesn't. So I'm going to take the left channel and send it also to the right channel. So I say OK. And now I have the sound in both of them. And if I play it, it will sh show up in the levels also. Used to have teleportation. I also see that it's a little, the level's a little high. It's bouncing up into the red there. That's not good. I could bring that levels down a little bit. How do I do that? I want to bring the levels down for an entire area, the audio output or the gain here, amplitude. I can grab this slider. Uh, my cursor turns to a up-down slider, which is volume. When I hover over the center between the two channels, okay. So if I grab this and yank it down a little bit, tell me how many decibels I'm removing. I'm, I'm going to go down to about minus three or four, three something, whatever. Now I'll play it. Power, so I could go See, it's, anywhere it's actually not going to go quite as high, which is nice. Okay, good. Um, so we uh, changed it to sound coming both channels, and we uh, also learned to use this little uh, indicator, this, this line, to change the overall volume of something, which we kind of already knew, I suppose. Now let's go ahead and stick some more sound in here. I'm going to scroll down so I can see the, this, the audio track below that. And right in the, from the very beginning on through, I'm going to drag this piece of audio, this just song file here, right? And if I play it, I'm going to delete the very beginning, by the way. I mean, I mean sort of like crop to remove the, very, the tip there. And if I play it from over here someplace. Well, it's actually playing over there, but you get the idea the sound. The sound is okay. Um, I think it's the, the volume is all right. But the problem is going to be over here, when I get to this point, we have somebody talking. We have somebody talking at the same time there. In fact, if I want to, I can scroll up and see their audio. So what are we going to do? Well, where they start talking here, and I don't want more space. I always run out of space in this program. I'm going to change the difference between the audio and the video portions here. Also, I'm going to open up this audio portion a little more. Will they start speaking? I'm going to make the volume go down and go back up again. So this is using an envelope. And to get to the envelope, it's the same line. But now I hold down Control. And I'm going to click, make a control point, another control point. I can grab the second one. The first one acts as like a hinge and bring it down a ways. Yeah, I'll bring it way down here. And I could listen to it. I could actually be listening to it while I do this if I wish. It's a little bit unnecessary, but volume goes down. Good, something like that. You have to determine the correct levels. And then I'll click back here again and click up here again and goes up again to that point. Do notice, I can actually bring it up more. I can make it super crazy loud. Uh, it's not a good idea. I'll just bring it back up to its zero point there, roughly. Okay, so we would let this continue on going. Um, in the meantime, let's imagine we have to bring in some other files. Let's bring in some of our um, images. There's an image. Drag and drop it in there. It drags in just like any other piece of video. And what uh, this one here, sure. And I got this lousy old piece of video here. I would drag and drop that in there too. It's got some audio with it too. We'll ignore that for now. Well, I see here from this little mini, and if I opened it up, I would notice that this is a vertical photo. What happens if I put my cursor there? 
I've only seen a little bit of it. These images, like so many from cameras today, are enormous. So it's not really showing us the whole thing. Well, if I want to see the whole thing, well, you should actually at least look at it. Right click on any image or video that's not the same size, not the same proportions, perhaps, or size, and say set to frame size. Now we see if we're going to look at the whole thing in the vertical, maybe we want to, that's what it's going to look like. This guy has a similar problem. Put my cursor there so I can see it. Do a right click. I say set to frame size, and I see. Now I see the whole image, but these little bars are here. I could expand that just a little bit to fill up the whole frame. That would make sense. Um, over here, and this has not been fair. I've been, I've had this thing up here. You probably should be seeing source no clips right there. Um, I can double click on this image, for instance, and it will appear in the source panel preview. And that's where I can go to effect controls, which motion is usually closed to begin with. I can open up motion and here I can change what the scaling see scale if i hover over that i get the little slider guy there and now i start to drag to the right or the or i can scale it anything like that if i hold the control down it actually makes it a lot easier to scale it more slowly i'll make it just big enough to fill up the frame nicely all the way around like that um i could position i could change the position and so on too if we needed to i don't really need to in this case and what else um, let's go ahead and go back to this image here. Um, you can double click on that. Now maybe I just want to make it a little bigger and get rid of that stuff on the top there. Okay. Well, I'm going to affect, go effect controls again. And I can say, let's scale it up a little bit. Well, actually, yeah, why not? Let's scale. We'll scale up a little bit. And now I'm going to use position. Vertical is this side, I believe. And I'm going to go up a little bit like that. Nope, the wrong way, the other way. I could go ahead like that, I'm just dragging. I could go put numbers in differently. So let's say that's how much I want there. Something like that. The image is plenty big enough to handle this. I have to worry about if I make an image too big, it'll get fuzzy, but not really an issue here. Well, what about this, this person here? This uh, clip, and I don't have, um, I, if I don't need to use the motion features, I can just do a right click on it and choose set to frame size, which is pretty big. Here the problem is going to be is that that's going to start to look pretty fuzzy. So I have to decide whether I really want to. Now let's imagine that one of these, let's say this one, is actually on top of some other video. Here we go. I'm going to drag it up and drag it over here and put my cursor there. And the problem is, let's say I move this image here because they're talking about this hike and I want to show it while they're talking about it. But now I can see them through there. That's not good. Well, I need a piece of mat there, right? I need a piece of mat there to hide the image. Of course, images can be made bigger, longer, or shorter, as I wish. Um, how, where do I get that mat? Do you remember? I had one I already made. you remember how to make it? New thing, new item, color mat right there. I got one right there. I can drag and drop it in there. I can make it the same length as the image. Now that's what it looks like. And my other video is still there. When I go past it, it's still there, but whatever. Okay. Okay, and back again after another interruption. So um, all that I've done since I'm gone is I, I brought down two and three also. So now I just have these regular clips with audio. I didn't fix the mono audio on these, but anyway, you get the idea. And I'm, an idea is now I want to add some transitions. A transition here, a transition here. I can add transitions to my titles too, like a crossfade. But I'm not sure if you've noticed, if I take a clip and I try to drag it over another clip, like I'm going to make it a crossfade, it doesn't work. In fact, what it does is it cuts the other clip, it shortens it. So I do control Z out of that. Back in. Okay, uh, another interruption. Let's put some transitions in here. Something like crossfades between these three clips would be nice. How about that? For transitions, one well, the easiest thing to do is to go to the effects workspace. And then you'll probably look closed up like this when you go. I think the ones you use the most are video transitions, which is particularly the dissolve area, and audio transitions, which is probably the fades here. Okay. Um, let's just do some video transitions. Cross dissolve is the closest one to a cross fade, which you may have heard used in other programs. 
If I drag it and drop it between two clips, right there, for instance, between those two clips, or between these two clips right here, and drag and drop it, it appear, it, it sort of seems to have disappeared there, but it's actually it has taken effect. I can double click on it and it says, what the heck? It's so tiny. How did that happen? I do not know. It's supposed to be at one second. That's more like it. I must have got screwed up from before. Or I would double click on it and make it two seconds or whatever. It was at like a couple of frames. That was crazy. Um, let's make it two so that it shows up more visibly when I demonstrate it. Say OK. And you see the transition is appearing here. Um, I could kind of bring it between the two of them, which might make a little more sense. Um, I will now see what happened is it does a cross fade between them. Now it's using the parts of the of the video which are not visible to us because they've been edited around to make that fade. So that's why we don't do the uh, drag and drop thing. Um, and here's another one. I'll do this one over here now too. Drag it between the two of them. And sometimes you get this message, insufficient media. This trans transition will contain repeated frames. What that means is there's not enough stuff left over here. There were the kind of edits that left that kind of stuff. So therefore it has to use, repeat some frames which is not a bad thing, it just warns you. Because now if I go through, there is still a fade. It still does the fade. In fact, if I make it bigger, it'll become more visible. And I want to make sure it's centered on that stuff. There yeah, it is. And I'll drag again. It still is a fade, even though it's been having to repeat frames to do it. So another nice thing is that when you do fades like this, you haven't shortened the video as a result. That's one way to look at it. Um, okay, so what else could I do? Well, I could do a, um, a fade to a title. How about this title here? I'm going to get rid of the black stuff underneath it. Remember that my movie title? Let's say when it, when it quits at the end, I want it to fade out right there. I could take my cross dissolve and drag and drop it at, this, at the end of the video, at the end of the, the title. And here now it'll fade out. See, it's fading there. See? Okay. Um, and of course, I could have done that with the piece of black also. I could have faded the black too. I faded them both, if I wish. Um, maybe stagger them a little bit. Uh, yeah, I won't bother. You can figure it out. Um, okay, so we did. Um, and what about some audio fades? Yeah, let's do and look at that. We've got this big piece of song here. I'm going to imagine that I'm going to cut it off at a certain point. Um, I've got no video here anyway. The video ends there. So I'm going to go down and look at my this big piece of audio. I'm going to make a slice in it right here. Let's make a slice right there. Uh, razor blade tool and I'll do a slice right there. And then I'll use my selection tool, grab that thing, delete it. Okay, so the problem of course though is that it's going to, the sound is going to be loud and go boom to nothing. I want to make a fade out of that audio there. I would go to audio transitions audio transitions and I really need to learn the difference between these fades I'm gonna use constant power though sounds impressive constant power double click on it and I'm also gonna make it two seconds to make it last a little longer to make it a little more visible although one is probably fine so now let's listen to it at the end um, I better play through it listen Okay, it fades out over two seconds. Fades out very nicely. So uh, I could do audio fade in at the other end. Uh, there isn't a fade in and fade out. It just fades whichever side of it you stick it on. Um, so I'm going to save my work now, too. There's a save. I haven't done that often enough. And finally, um, let's imagine I've done all the work I need to do. That's most of the skills you need. Let's go ahead and export it. Um, again, I could go to any of these workspaces to do it. I'm going to go back to editing because just to say I did. There I am in the editing workspace. And I'm going to do, I can do Control M or File, Export, Media. I've noticed that some people do that, Control M, which I'll do now, or File, Export, Media, and then they, and then nothing seems to happen. And they have to wait and try it again and again. I don't know why. I think it's just the program having problems. So if it doesn't work, nothing comes up. Um, try the alternative. If you did the menu, try the shortcut key, Control M. And if still nothing comes up, wait a while and try it again. Worst comes to worst, save your work, 
close the program, open it back up again, open that project again, that sequence again, and it should be, it should work. The things you want to do here are, you want to choose H2S4, and you want to change this to, so that's format, change the preset to, and these are in your instructions, YouTube 1080 Full HD, and then you can change the name of it, to some whatever name, and at the same time, you can browse to put it where you want to put it. You'll be putting it otherwise in the folder where you started. Oh, great. Okay. Let's wait for it to respond. So, guess what? I crashed, but I'm back here again. So, we changed that to as shown, change the preset to as so shown, change the name and change the, the location if we wish. I'll leave that the same for now because it crashed me last time. Anyway, um, leave those. Everything else stays can stay the same. You can learn a lot more about these settings and do things to improve them if you wish. But something that is important is right down here. You probably want entire sequence. You didn't set any in or out points in the sequence. That's another option you could have done setting in and out points. But I think you're not sure if someone said accidentally. You definitely don't want a custom or work area or so on and so forth. That entire sequence is the safest thing. You want the whole thing, right? Right. Then just go ahead and click export and it'll take a little while, but not terribly long probably. And then you will find your MP4 in the location where you were supposed to send it. Um, last thing I'm going to say is that you've noticed that there's been some issues with the program in different places. Maybe what you should do is restart the computer, a regular full restart before you launch the program and then launch the program and work like that, probably be a little bit safer. Otherwise, just keep on saving if you're going. Good news is it seems to save everything very well, and if you have to start up again, well, that's how it goes.